how close you got with the camera. And look at the mess back here. War of the World starred Tom Cruise and Dakota Fanning. And there was a scene where they woke up after a horrific night. And this is what they woke up to. The plane crash set. Looks a little bit like this on screen. This is the production designer talking about it. That is all designed around the vision of Stephen Hawking. We began to sit down and talk about the world. I thought, what if the 747 was right in a big neighborhood? Because it's just something you don't see. So this incredible set, yes, was uh, kind of masterminded by Mr. Spielberg himself, and uh, purchased this plane. Let's see, for about nineteen thousand uh, dollars, I was retired and sitting in a plain graveyard out in the Mojave Desert. And then we had to shave off the tops just to get it under the freeway overpasses to get here. So they liked the look so much they kept it that way for the set. Um, and then the tail end was so large they dropped it here by helicopter because they kept that part intact. Uh, all in all, with the filming, they thought this set cost probably around eight and a half million dollars. Uh, it was used for four and a half minutes in the movie. Let's you know the uh, uh, cost for some things now these days. Now these houses look like they're falling apart, but they were actually built this way. So this is what they started out looking like. Remember I was talking about the metal shop. They're responsible for kind of propping up a lot of pieces of this set, uh, keeping it intact and looking the same way uh, month after month after month. And right around the corner, I think it's time for a vacation. How about this cabin here? You used to be one of my favorite movies of all time. Don't do awesome. bad. This log cabin is a practical set. You can see that it's all done inside as well, so we can film inside it. It was used for the TV series Coach. It was his house in that movie, or that show with Craig T. Nelson. But now it's out here, and what a view it gets. A kind of nice wilderness area uh, with the, uh, the ocean. Uh, with this, uh, what we call Falls Lake. Falls Lake is used a lot for movie finales. And then play a little montage here. This gives you some examples of what we can use uh, it for. It was first used, the backdrop anyways, for Jaws the Revenge. This is Jurassic Park 3. The Hulk, when we have it dry, we drain the lake, we can use it as well. The splashdown sequence in Apollo 13 took, put, took place out there. As did uh, Van Helsing. Bruce Almighty walked on water and George Clooney survived the flood and her brother were on down. I love it when it's full because you guys can kind of get an idea for how we use it. So this blue screen we can either replace later on in digital production or we can paint clouds on it. Uh, maybe we paint a sunset on it. Charlie's Angels, we drain this and put Lucy Lou's trailer out in front of it. And uh, that uh, scene was shot out here where the trailer got shot up and uh, it actually looked like a backdrop. Uh, for that movie. Also for the Truman shows, we built this all the way up and he bumped his boat into the back wall there. We built a staircase into it and he says goodbye at the end of that movie uh, in this backdrop as well. It is one of the largest freestanding backdrops that exist here in Hollywood. So uh, we can do major scenes out there, major ocean sequences without actually going in the ocean. Filming on water is really tall. And uh, if we can control that a little better, uh, we can add wave machines to that to really churn up the water. Uh, for Evan Almighty, we built the ark and we actually had it on a gimbal so that it swayed back and forth robotically. And then we had wave machines kicking up the waves on either side of it. So it's all a controlled scene, but it looks out of control on screen. National Treasure 2, that's where the city of gold flooded at the end of the movie too. I uh, was in our Falls Lake. And in Indiana 4, that is where the temple went spinning into oblivion at the very end of the film. So they kept that under tight wrap. And guys, check it out. Great view here. We call this the overview because you can see just about every element of our lot here. Mystery Lane on the right, our property department directly in front of us, a little bit of our uh, courthouse square that's left there in the Metropolis. Is that, is that Wisteria? Just yeah, there. see the blue house there, kind of the blue eaves? On the right, that's Wisteria Lane. Um, that's actually, this, we're just going down there in Wisteria Lane. And then you can see ancient Rome down next to the property warehouse. And even out of the San Gabriel Mountains and Burbank to Luca Lake, lots of filming takes place out here just in the San Fernando Valley. And uh, it really takes all the different departments working together to make it happen. And I kind of hope that from this tour, you come to understand that we have not only our actors and our producers,
producers and directors. We have our wardrobe, our props department, our sound department, our mill. Everyone has to have a piece of it in order to just make one little moment of the movie magic happen for you guys in the theater. Hey, Dave. Yes. Your time to take us downstairs. Yes. Awesome. Yeah.